Hey YouTube, here's Heiko. We're back down in my garage. VW bus behind me. My permanent project. I think I ordered part for this Chinese quad. Let me think about it. Two months ago. Thanks COVID-19. Anyways, uh, we're back down in the garage uh, working on starters for my 74R90-6. In a previous video, we had been looking at two starters, the one that came out of my bike and a replacement that I had lying around in a, in a bin. Um, we looked at, let me grab it real quick here. We looked at uh, some of the part numbers on the starter. So uh, this one here is a 00011570015, which is supposedly a 0.6 horsepower starter and the one that i took out of my bike has a little bit slightly different part number it ends in 007 and is a 0.5 horsepower starter and what i could gather online is that um, the one in my bike i have a 74 r90 select slash six is um, a slash five or very early slash six starter so it kind of fits, you know, 74 was the first year of uh, the R90, or was it end of 73? So very early ones were made end of 73. So I guess they, they you know, the, the R90 slash 6, especially the first year was kind of a part spin special. They just took whatever they had left over from the um, slash 5. And then this one here is a proper uh, slash 6 starter, 8 teeth. The gears 18th later year airheads they had 19th um this one is a little rusty crusty on the outside i've already had it open it really doesn't look all that bad um and in this video we're gonna go ahead and take this all apart so starter is in the vise let's start taking this thing apart um, I've already kind of taken a peek into this thing. Everything is loose. Everything will come apart. Long studs that hold this thing together. And you have to take this little cap off. Held in by two slot screws and what looks like used to be a wave washer back in the days before it was so crushed together that it most likely is not a wave washer any longer this is a grease cap um, there is a rubber ring kind of a seal at the bottom I guess so that the shmoo doesn't go, get all over the place and there is a, a, a little it's almost like an e-clip but it doesn't really clip in it just slides in looks like a half moon shape kind of thing and then there are two three oh here yeah, this one there are three little shims and a thicker washer behind this so and then oh, flip this around let's um oh no let's do let's clamp it down this way so and then here is an, a little uh, a bolt which is the axle for a fork that moves your gear set here uh, what size is that a 10 no, yes a 10 Pull that on. Fortunately, I already know how this all goes apart and back together. Here, let me grab a little magnet tray so we're not losing everything in the process. Okay, shims, the axle, the half moon shaped thingy, this grease thing. All right. Um, and then 
now we can do two things. We can keep take the cover off the, the end where the brushes are. It's actually relatively clean in here. And uh, looking at those brushes, it's, it's almost a shame if I will replace those because they are not much shorter than the ones that are here in my little baggie. Uh, let's compare this because, you know, I, I don't have a, a donkey in the corner that poops dollar bills. So, or a, a chicken that lays golden eggs. The, the brushes are a sixteenth of an inch shorter than the new ones. These are the new ones. And the new ones are just, uh, the, the, the ones in here are just worn in a little more. So, I don't think we're going to do the brushes. And looking at the soldering job here, this looks like these are the original solder joints. The one in uh, the Slash 5 starter that I just cleaned up, the solder joints were all so terrible that I assume that someone in the past has already redone this. It's working, but this is too good to just throw away, if you know what I'm saying. Um, and so now the trick is, two, two brushes are soldered to the carrier, and two are soldered to the, the stator windings. And uh, so that's why I can't just pull this off. What I'm going to do, what am I going to do? That's the question. What am I going to do? I'm going to take two brushes out, the ones that are connected to the stator windings. The stator windings, they can be removed by removing four bolts. But oftentimes those bolts are so in there don't want to come off, come loose, uh, that I will not even attempt to do that. I am just going to go with the trick of pulling the, the two brushes off that are connected to it and then just leave it alone. So uh, let's see here. You can't see anything, huh? No, I know. Um, I'll show you here on this one, okay? You just need to pull the springs off so it, it releases the tension and then one is out. So here I'll show you. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? Let me zoom in. There. Ha! Light on? Is that better? No. Doesn't make a difference. You stick one little screwdriver under the spring move that out and then reach behind the electrical connection the the copper wire here that makes the connection to the stator winding and just pull it out ding and then whoosh. oh uh we're still stuck here why are we still stuck Oh, I'm sorry. That was a little quick. There you go. Um, now that we have this all here in front of us, now just look at this. This is old brush. This is the new brush. Yeah, maybe it's it's a tad more than a sixteenth, but in those brushes, there's so much life left that I'll just keep those. You know, getting to the starter is not rocket science it's oh i just dropped the spring so i am totally not going to replace this and the springs the springs is not even a necessity to replace it uh, you can totally reuse those springs as long as they are not broken i guess it's a good idea to do it if you are already in here but since we're not going to be replacing that doesn't want to come out this way because there is connections of the stator windings they're kind of in the way and i don't want to bend anything this is all uh coated in some insulator so we're going to take this and 
now that we have the brush carrier off there's no risk of yanking oh, let's move this over there can you guys see let's see oh you can't see anything now you can see there get my new favorite tool vertex made in taiwan i couldn't afford a german i wanted a german dead blow hammer but oh here we go let's crank this down a little more you got to be careful cranking because this uh, housing is is a big pipe more or less and the front end here it's just a little stuck and there is also oh, actually this is interesting so there you go so we we uh, ooh, uh, dropping parts oh very interesting so from the outside those two stores literally looked identical yeah, let's zoom out a more out um the the slash five starter has a little insert here it's a metal coin size round disc lying in here and on the other side is rubber here on this one it looks like they just went cheap and and put this little thing in here that's it it's just a piece of rubbery rubber stuff but i mean it does the same job so here is your your gear mechanism with a spring and all that and um there is a fork well the fork is also different this slides onto a ring and on the other one it grabs onto little two tabs so and this slot here is where this fork runs yeah see that kind of and then um your starter solenoid engages here and the, the little axle bolt that i pulled out is um going through this one here so that's that's where everything goes you can't pull up oh let me put this aside i mean there's nothing more to remove here besides the little bronze bushing oh yeah i wanted to tell you how to check the play now that we have it off you can literally stick it on here and then see how much play there is see that wiggle but that's almost normal because if i grab oh see i already jumped the gun i took those two bushings that i have brand new and put them in engine oil um some of those are made out of oil light material oil light bushings it's kind of a center material that gets impregnated with uh, engine oil these ones here they look really just like brass bushings so they are probably just going to wear really quickly and and then if i wiggle this this also has play so i would say that these bushings in here they're probably still serviceable we're going to replace them anyways so i'll throw that back into engine oil i don't know if it helps i i will put a light smear of grease on each end um so yeah like i said uh, you can take the rotor out this here is uh, this whole front gear mechanism there is a little bearing here that kind of catches it um when when the solenoid moves it forward uh this bearing is a little rough on the edges uh we're gonna run it through the parts no we're not gonna run it i don't want to put the windings into my parts washer but yeah i guess the front end we can this is stiff this is not good this needs to be rolling but i think after washing and then uh, giving it some lubrication the fork here is also caked in schmoo that gets all cleaned up the little axle for the fork can also get a little bit of some copper anti-seize or some lubricant and then the armature that's where the brush is right on i mean you can see discoloration but 
there's no wear in it I'm just gonna take some fine sandpaper clean this up clean both bearing ends up so the one bushing right here one right here clean it up make sure there's no wear At the moment you can't really not tell because there's so much not bad not bad so this is all good this really doesn't need much attention at all so i'm just going to put that aside yeah and then here's a, a housing with a stator winding uh in a starter world i mean this is an electric motor so those are the stator windings and the other windings in the rotor are the rotor windings in a starter they are called something else oh yeah here this looks like cardboard thin cardboard this is an insulator so that um, the soldering connections between those two brushes don't touch the housing yeah and then here this is the connector that goes uh, to to this side of the solenoid kind of like there and that's pretty much it oh yeah here this is the thing that inter interfaces with a fork like so and that's the whole trick and now i'm gonna get the outside all shiny all the rust off um and then i i probably will paint this in a completely assembled state and just tape off the electrical connections and the gear because you know you just paint stuff and then you have to mask all those edges off to be able to reassemble it i think i'm gonna be spray painting this afterwards but i'm definitely gonna wire wheel this all off all right you got you guys don't need to oh yeah here's the other bushing in here's the other bushing you can also test that one because you know i i really don't feel like everything always has to be replaced and brand new there's this play but it's minimal if I now grab the oily one here and stick this one on here I, I don't know if if this would be much different if I replace this bushing and still have the same amount of play afterwards I would be kind of upset So, at least the loose paint is gone, and most of the rust is gone, and rust is going to do the rest. I'm not too worried about it. It's, it's cosmetic. It's not functional. So, I didn't damage anything, even though this little thing flapped once. The brush is really, I mean, just saying, they, they really look too good to just throw them out and the solder joints i have a electronic cleaning spray that i'm gonna be employing on this here i just want to get all the caked on black stuff it's probably you know schmoo from i don't even know i want to clean that out and then degrease the outside of course also very nicely so this is good um the rotor it's good i just cleaned out this little bearing with compressed air and some wd-40 and it's really happy now it's quiet and then um, all this metal surfaces um, were cleaned all the metal surfaces this here and this here and there and everywhere was cleaned with a little, little bit of some wd-40 on a rag so now it's all nice and smooth and then the armature, I just uh, use 1000 grit. Um, they look like a scotch bright pad, but they are for a paint prep. So to scuff up a paint that you want to paint over. So I use that, clean this all up. This is, you know, as clean as I need it. And then 
blew this whole thing out, the whole winding with compressed air. You can't really do anything mechanical to this because it's all coated with insulation. And so this is fine. And uh, yeah, the sleeves this here. This needs to be all really grease free. The cover needs to be grease free from the outside at least. Yeah, okay. So this needs all to be nicely degreased. Yeah. I guess uh, I will have to stop for today. We'll be back with you guys uh, soon. For you, it's just going to be a few seconds. Bye. All right. So here we go. Done lots of cleaning. It's been uh, in the parts washer and in the ultrasonic cleaner and then back in the parts washer. Same with this. Uh, this, of course, I didn't throw in the parts washer. I just cleaned and blew off and scuffed up the, the armature, uh, the uh, commutator. And then uh, why I brushed this a lot to get all the rust off and the old paint. Uh, I still need to do some inside cleaning before reassembly, but that's just spraying it down with some electronic cleaner forks neat almost new um, and then the front part of the starter here has a little bit of some weird machining really rough edges uh, before I put that back together I'm going to deburr that a little bit and this also has taken a uh, couple laps in the ultrasonic cleaner and the parts washer and then back there and back and forth uh, still some grime on there so after I grind this here a little bit or just file it, I will uh, put it back in the parts washer and give it another round. Had it sit overnight in uh, soaked with WD-40 to maybe loosen up some of the gunk. All right, let's see what we can do here. There's like a piece of the casting. sticking out it looks like this one i mean this is a newer newer model than than the starter that i currently have in my bike but the the one in my bike looks like they they did a little bit more cleaning when they put that all together uh, let's see how are we what the shape of file here we go maybe a half round this is like really sharp edge right there No wonder that so much gunk gets stuck in here because it's such rough. In the company that I was an industrial mechanic, if the machinist that machined the surfaces of like cast cast iron parts, they were responsible for also deburring them after the after the manufacturing process if they would have left those kind of sharp edges on there that part would have come right back and this here is bmw i mean you know so i like that much better now i just like it a little more deburred and clean So and now we're gonna try there's still gunk on there. Can you even see here? Gunk up on here. After all this washing and cleaning and washing and washing and cleaning. Uh, now I'm gonna try to figure out a way how we can drive this old bushing out without destroying this. And I think a heat gun is gonna be part of this process. So I'm going to try to find a, I don't have a 
bearing driver kit with a with a punch that would fit this so i i think i will have to use a socket let's see if we can find one too big mm, a little on the small side too big so the number 10 it is let's see if maybe a different brand of number 10 socket will mm, too big let's see what else we have let's see what else we got nope no nope. I think this might be this might be the ticket. So I'm gonna heat this, heat the cast, and then my my new beloved dead blow hammer is already ready to go. Dead blow hammer, my sacrificial. Oh yeah, easy, easy peasy. Almost fell out. Um, I guess now I'm gonna wait until this is dry. Yeah, why? Why actually? That's the question. Why? We're gonna just keep it warm. I have the new bushing here had it soak in oil you know some some bushings are made out of an oil light material that is porous and that is actually impregnated with oil uh, this one here really looks like brass so I don't think my soaking did anything but it's all it's all uh, you know psychosomatic so Heating, heating, heating. Well, you know what? And I need a light. I need to make sure that I'm not driving. Where's my light? That I'm not driving the bushing too far. So it, it wants to line up with the bottom edge. So don't want to go too far. Okay, without burning my fingers, putting that in here. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, easy. And my punch, 10 millimeter. Oh, it's just almost there already. Give it a couple light, light taps. Quick look. Oh, 
couple couple more light tabs. Beautiful. Okay, that's in. Okay, now don't touch. Might be hot. Might be acceptable here. Put it over to the parts washer. And now let's find out how we're going to do the other one. Since this is all a little bit thinner material, I don't think I can do the same clamp it. I mean, it's pretty stiff. I would like to, let's try it this way. So it, it is supported by the vise, like so, okay. <clears throat> and this one here lines up with the outside, not the inside, but the outside. Okay, heating, punching. Oh, let's, let's see if we can find a, this is different size, okay. Too small. Better, better, much better. Okay, heating, punching, done. Punch, don't burn your, oh yeah, that's, it's smoky. Oh, no, not moving yet. We might have to. We might have to. Get a really big pair of pliers like these. Turn it around, heat it from here so we can actually get the, the wall around the bushing. Okay, smoky smoke. This seems to be actually some some impregnated bushing here. All right, support it. All right. Don't burn yourself, my girls. Let's do extension. Nope, it's not going. It's not going. What's the trick? Oh, maybe it has moved a millimeter because it's sticking out ever so slightly. So let's let's continue this route. Smoking. This time we're going to be a little faster. We already got all the tools here. Nope, it's not going. 
not going. I, I wonder if it doesn't like the direction. And let's try if we can maybe get it the other direction. I just don't want to... Oh yeah, it, it went back in. Maybe this is a little too large. My little punch here. It doesn't want to... Yep, that's better. Let's see if it maybe wants to go this way. Yep, better, better. Fell out. Good. Okay, so now we know that we have to punch it in from the other side. So let's punch it in from the bottom side. Maybe maybe the opening is not. It's It maybe has a lip or something where it gets stopped from. All right. So here we already pushing. Try that off a little bit. It's been sitting in uh, 20W50, full synthetic engine oil. I don't know if that's the proper oil to, um, you know, to use for this kind of activity, but it doesn't matter to me. Let's get it started with my flat. Uh-huh. And then... Goes in easily. Mm -hmm. Let's use the larger one that I didn't want to use just so that I have a little bit more surface area. All right, still warm. Let's take a look. Looks good. We might. Yeah, good. So now I have done as much cleaning as I feel like I want to do. Some uh, Molly graphite grease on the shaft end here on the fork interface um, and then we need to kind of stick it all together that it makes sense kind of here there's a cutout in in this little lip can you see that no you can't i'll show you there's a little cutout and that cutout is where the fork goes and then corresponding to that is this cutout here as well and uh, then of course i don't want to get any kind of grease on my freshly clean surfaces here so now i have to be just careful oh it doesn't fit huh oh it does it doesn't it doesn't want to go in but uh, I think we can convince it later. All right, so uh, rotor is in, the fork is in, and now we're just gonna put it in my vise. So now um, the housing is not quite together. And I don't wanna hit here because there's this insulation paper. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put the, oh, you know what? I haven't even shown you this. So this is the brush holder. There are two brushes still in there and the connection is done right to this carrier. And then the other two that we took out, they are actually insulated from this plate with this, some sort of plastic sheet that's on there, an insulator. Um, and now we just have to grab my baby screwdriver, push those out and, and kind of Make the spring hold it in that position, kind of like so. Oh, I just undid the other one, dang it. Always have to do everything twice. You know, you have to remember, always do everything twice. Kind of like, like so. Now the spring is pushing against the side. That kind of holds it in place. But uh, before, oh, you guys can even see, man.
just say something. So um, spring is pushing against the side, not against the back. That holds them in place. That makes it easier for the assembly. And then later you just push them in. And uh, then we have to struggle with the, the two other brushes to put them in there. But that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Uh, let me clean this up. Electronic uh, cleaner and some compressed air. Okay, I'll be right back. The electronic cleaner that I'm talking about is this stuff here. Uh, it's quick dry, doesn't leave anything behind, washes off dust and debris and whatnot of electronic parts without damaging circuit boards or contacts or wiring or insulation. So this is now fairly clean. Um, you can see there and there is this cutout. That's where my two studs will go through that hold the, the cover on. And you kind of have to line it up with, uh, there are really only two spots in here uh, to put them through. One is right there and one is right there. The rest is all full with uh, the stator windings and connectors. And, and so now we just have to line it up kind of like, so here's a cutout and here's, oh, I, I'm already dropping stuff again. A rusty washer. You know, a little bit of some rustiness needs to stay on, on this. I need to also wash those off the, the threaded ends. I don't want to, um, so for now they are not, not ready to be installed yet. But, um, so you, you have to line up those little cutouts, those U-shaped cutouts with a hole where the bolts can go through. That's about right there and right there. And then, let me think. Nope, maybe the other way around. Because uh, we have to make it work with those brushes there. Yep, that works. All right, and now my favorite little screwdriver, the uh, Hahn und Kolb, German company that made this. Again, we have to struggle with pushing the, the spring completely out of the way, and then somehow manage to stick the brush in there. Uh-oh, I'm already slipping. The, you know what, actually, maybe that's a good idea. So the two that we kind of clipped into position, uh, maybe they can help us hold the brushes or the brush holder in, in position while I'm bending around on those springs. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, much better. Uh -huh. Like so. And now I'm, I'm making silly facial expressions every time I work on something and I can't do anything about it. People have told me many times. It's just what I do. Come on now. Go in there. Here we go. So brush number one is in. And brush number two. Have to make sure we're not damaging anything or yanking on anything. Huh. What? what? Oh, I was trying to stick it in in the wrong location. Okay, spring on. Brushes, all four brushes are installed. And um, you don't have to now worry about how this is all located. Um, ultimately, the outer cover has two screws going into the brush holder. So the brush holder is going to be located by the housing and also the distance and all that stuff. So we're pretty much good. We have a clean armature. We have clean insides at least as far as you don't want to scrub around because the 
stata windings are all insulated with some red coating uh cleaned it out blew it out dust is out this is clean the brushes are reusable serviceable and now we need my cover oh the cover that i just cleaned again once again with degreaser i have uh, purple power in my parts washer and i use uh, wd-40 degreaser in my ultrasonic cleaner uh, my ultrasonic cleaner usually gets used for aluminum parts and aluminum doesn't like purple power aluminum always gets really dark and, and kind of ugly from purple power but the wd-40 degreaser is aluminum friendly so specifically usable for carburetors and that kind of stuff so in this one now um, also has to here's a little cutout and over here is where the connector to the starter solenoid is and this cutout goes right over there so really everything um, has its proper location you can't really put it together all that long to be honest so now we can turn this ever so slightly no nope. no we're going to take this off one more time because i forgot one very important thing which is putting a slight smear of grease on there just a little bit so this is star loop molly graph multi-purpose grease You don't want to put too much on there because then it just goes everywhere and then makes a smeary mess out of it. Just like so. Where did I put the cover? Oh, over there. And then let's, yeah, we need to make, make this go over that way a little more or else the hole doesn't line up the little holes that those little screws go, go through that oh. but I also have my favorite little flathead screwdriver that can for sure line this all up a little bit so um, now we have to push from the other side push the push the rotor up uh, you know what since we don't have the housing all the way together we're going to turn it around let the rotor fall the other direction support this here Kind of like so and give the housing a couple taps so it slides together oh yeah doesn't need much force you want to make sure after all this all your little grooves and gaps and stuff still lines up and that your fork hasn't fallen off but i don't think on, on this particular model the fork is is a little bit nicer located so, and now we actually kind of have to hold it in this orientation because we need the uh, rotor to stick out pretty far to get the shims and the half moon locating clip on there. And again, we're going to put some grease in here and we're going to put a, a, a dab of grease into that little cap that goes over the end here as well. So I... I cleaned them all. No, let's let's wipe them one more time. I want to make sure there is no grime, dirt, grease, metal particles. Now with a little bit of grease there on the end, it's going to stay in place. Make a smear out of it. There we go. 
and then my half moon shape thing let's take a quick look at this you can see that there is a shiny you can't even see what i'm doing oh my goodness guys yeah so half moon shape you can see that there is a shiny ring and on the other side it's kind of even so i'm assuming that this side was against the the shims yeah so like that and then this cover here is very clean now we're going to put a liberal amount of grease in here i don't know maybe if i use something bigger than a q-tip kind of like so and then sh squeeze that over there we're probably going to have lots of lots of squeeze out maybe that's a little too much grease coming out that's not perfect for our upcoming um, paint job but that's what we have to deal with I want to really have this greased well so well, now we have the washers on now I just have to line up the, the brush carrier with the holes in the cover here okay. yeah number uno All right, this one is in, and then this one. All right, so now we have the grease cap, all the, um, no, I forgot a piece. Dang it, you guys need to pay attention too, you know. You got to tell me when I make a mistake, or else it just gonna take much 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 longer if you know what I mean so now we have to take that off again because we forgot the rubber o-ring the bottom of this grease schmear thing there's supposed to be a ring and now we of course have so much grease there that if I don't remove that probably gonna smear it all over this thing so like that and then we're going to shove this back in there, like that. Now I have grease on the outside of the cap. I guess we have to do a really good job degreasing before we um, before we uh, start painting this. So, you know, grease on the inside, clean on the outside. That's the the proper technique, I guess. Uh, now the holes don't line up again. And someone tell me how I can demagnetize a screwdriver properly. I have a demagnetization thing and it doesn't work, at least not properly. Oh. All right, let's try this again. Need to get the screw into the brush holder. There and there. So, and then before we paint this thing, after fully assembling it, we're gonna hook this up to battery power and see if it all works properly. Because I really don't want to have to rip this apart once it's all freshly painted, if you know what I mean. All right, so brush holder is located, grease cap is on with the o ring or the rubber ring. Now we're going to try to wiggle our fork into location here, like so, and like so that's where the axle goes through i really have no idea in which or uh, direction it goes through um you know which which 
side gets the nut and which side gets the the bolt but I don't think it might makes a big difference I can see that the imprint on the old paint is larger than the head so I'm assuming that here is where the the nut goes does it make sense maybe um, this is the axle a little nut okay, let me zoom out a little bit for you okay grease on the little bolt yeah that looks good that's how we're going to do it I, I i like to go by um indications from those old parts now we just have to make sure our fork yep there we go i have a a lock washer and a nut here and of course lots of grease came out and then this is i believe a 10 millimeter you're standing on the 10 millimeter there you go 10. Okay, let's put a screw screwdriver in there this is a german motorcycle so it's going to get good and tight since this is just an axle for that fork and it's really not holding anything together it's just locating something it doesn't really all need all that tight it just doesn't need to fall out all right and then we still have the two bolts here that i need to clean you know you guys don't need to watch me clean i'm also going to clean the housing here a little bit of the solenoid make that all a little shinier and cleaner and then we're going to slap that in a little bit more grease all right a few seconds so i just decided that i will not paint the solenoid it's a zinc somewhat zinc coated steel housing which looks relatively clean and then it has a plastic top and you know different materials and i just don't want to paint it so i'm just gonna clean my spade connector yeah i always use those gun cleaning brushes they're kind of nice i order them as a pack of 50 off of amazon yeah brass like that i'm also going to do that with a with a stats here take the nuts off but yeah you get the idea that means that we're going to uh, close this up with tape um so we are not painting the inside and then really put this aside until we're done painting also this little rubber insert that go uh, did i actually make a mistake and forget to put that in yes i did all right guys back to square one or can i squeeze that in there ah take it back i think i might be yep yeah, i can squeeze that in there after the fact makes more sense huh yeah all right fits in in the assembled state yeah wiggle wiggle a little bit it's all the way in there so do i leave this out and put that in after painting yes yes let's do that oh it doesn't want to come out again there you go all right um then let's focus on bolting this all together putting the studs through which i still haven't cleaned all right guys five seconds so ran both uh threaded ends of those studs over the wire wheel and now they should just go in here nicely some people want to put anti-seize or something on everything uh, it didn't have anti-seize on it when i took it apart so i think it's going to be just fine without it hmm. one side wants to go in 
the other side doesn't. So this one is in. What's the story? A little bit of some convincing. So and this here also just gets good and tight. I mean it holds a starter motor together. Now I'm going to think about everything one more time before I crank it down. Hmm. Hmm. We had a flashlight here somewhere. So when I look right in there, I can see that my gap in this part doesn't 100% line up with this one. So we're just going to use a gentle persuasion. Gentle persuasion. So that that gap lines up with the other gap. Yep, now it's perfect. Okay, and now I want to say the one that does, didn't want to go in all that nicely is probably now also lined up perfectly. Yeah. Nice and fluffy. Okay. This is really just holding the pieces together. It, it doesn't need, you know, 90 pound gorilla tightening those studs down, especially if you think about how thin those are. They're like M5, I want to say. Here, let's check this. M5, as I said, and they're pretty long. So if you put too much torque on those, you might snap them off. Now we're going to look at the two screws here one more time. Take them loose, wiggle the the grease cap around one more time and tight and tight and now uh, we're going to install the solenoid a little bit of grease I this is going to be temporary yeah um, remember I said we're not going to paint this but I do want it uh, uh, do a quick test run before I paint this thing. Here are the two screws. I always like to put screws right back in where they came from so I don't misplace them or then later you're wondering, mm, what was this part for? So now you see this, uh, this little tab hanging off here. That is the connection to the solenoid. And now which stud does it go on? I can tell you. The one that has the number 50, this little connection here, that's where it goes on. All right, we're just gonna, oh yeah. And the end that moves the fork is actually, it's, it's movable, you can turn it. So you're just gonna make it fit. Slide it over the fork. I could put a little bit more grease on the fork if I wanted to, but for now, since I will only do a quick little test run, well, gotta get this back together, guys. It's just a starter, right? All right. So our connection is still loose, but it's uh, it's there. And then. Our starter is also loose. Put it on its side. 
And now we just need to make sure we're lined up with a threaded answer. Yep, we are. That's number uno. And number dos. Right there. I don't always like to use the largest flat head that I can get in there. So this is going to come apart. We're just going to do a test run. All right. So let's clamp this down a little bit. Slightly. Get my battery pack here. Let me move you around. So we have it uh, hooked up. Neat. One little jumper cable. Jumper cable goes on this uh, number 50 spade connector. If I can get it on there, there we go. Without touching anything else metal. And then we're gonna turn the battery pack on. And then we're gonna touch the positive, the, the red clamp. And hopefully it doesn't fall into pieces. Yeah. Sounds good. No grinding noises. No grinding noises. Nice engagement of of our fork with the gear drive. Do you guys think I should put a little bit of some grease on the actual shaft where the gear mechanism slides on? Yeah, it's probably just going to attract more grime and dirt, huh? I love it. Love it, love it. Okay, that's it. Turn battery back off. Take all the clamps off. And uh, that's it for now. I'll be back with you once this is um, painted and reassembled to show you the final product. So, as I said, I will not paint this so this is going to come off uh, mask the inside here mask the inside there degrease the living daylights out of this thing and then give it a good uh, maybe I use some uh, self etching primer for the non painted sections and the painted sections I guess and uh, some rust-oleum black and that's it works bushings new bushings cleaned up runs like a dream. Bye guys, take care. Yeah, yeah, yeah.